Merry Christmas and welcome. I'm Margaret Maiman, Minister of St. Michael's Uniting Church in Melbourne. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever you've come from, wherever you're going to, whatever you believe, whatever you do not believe, you are welcome. We begin our worship with an acknowledgement of country. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have dwelled in this land since time before dreaming. We acknowledge that land was taken from indigenous people without their consent, treaty or compensation. At St Michael's, we acknowledge the Wurundjeri and Boon Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And we join with them in the hope for justice and reconciliation for the people and for the land. So I now invite you to acknowledge the first people on whose land you live. Happy Holy Christmas. Today we celebrate the gift of sacred presence in our midst. This day offers new hope on earth. Now is the time to rejoice, arise and laugh, dance and sing. From the far north to the deep south of this land and all across the world, the story will be told and the songs sung anew. On Christmas Day in this strange, disturbing year of 2020, as we carefully embrace the freedom of being able to gather together at St. Michael's Church, I am grateful that we are also able to continue to offer gatherings online for people who wish to participate in a progressive, inclusive, life-celebrating service of Christmas. We celebrate our lives lived in the awareness of sacred presence, and we are glad that you are joining us for Christmas. The earth is warm with hope. The seas rock gently in anticipation. The wind holds its breath in wonder as the day of Christmas dawns. The trees sway in quiet celebration and the flowers lift their heads in praise. The earth holds its breath as we enter the moment of Christmas. Let us sing with joy and with hope, O come all ye faithful.
last four Sundays, we lit the Advent candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. We light them again and remember the ways that peace, hope, joy, and love are always brought to birth. Today we come to light the Christ candle. This welcoming candle brings light and love as we celebrate Christmas in the warmth of summer. It is a candle of understanding. It lights up the darkness and drives away fear. The light of truth will lead us in unknown paths to learn more of the mysteries of life. We come in prayer, letting go of what has been, anticipating a season of new beginning. Let us pray. Holy center of this sacred season, Jesus, child and liberator, all our stars point to your birth. All our wanderings come home to you. All our griefs and delights find a place in the stable where poverty and pain, loneliness and rejection are transformed. Your light shines in our lives. Your peace embraces our anger, sorrow, and loss. Your life opens up to us a new discovery of our most intimate selves and of our neighbours, however we may find them, as poor shepherds, as foreign wise ones, as thoughtless innkeepers, as helpless as infants. We welcome the Christ child with awe and thanksgiving. In this earthly, earthy birth, we discover everlasting wonder and grace. And remembering the adult Jesus who taught his friends to pray, we pray together. God, you are life for us. Holy be your name. Your new day come, your will be done on earth as in your vision. Give us this day our bread for the morrow and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Strengthen us in the time of test and deliver us from evil. For the power and the splendour and the fulfilment are yours, now and forever. Amen. We share signs of peace in gestures and in words. As I share peace with you, I invite you to extend a sense of peace to your family and friends, your neighbourhood, your community, your city, and to our precious earth itself. The word of God is born among us. Christ, now known in Christa community, is come among us, and nothing can separate us from the love of the sacred. May grace and peace be yours, this Christmas day. Amen. Gazing into the manger, we see the child, the human one, in whom is born the promise of peace. We sing together a contemporary carol, Peace Child. Silence of stars 
of poetic imagination in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and travelled up to Judea, to the town of David, called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In the countryside close by there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks by night. The angel of God appeared to them and the glory of God shone around them they were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared with the whole people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you, who is the Christ. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to all who enjoy God's favour. Now when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which God has made known to us. So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. For imagination and wonder, we give thanks.
Contemporary reading is Where the Light Begins, A Blessing for Christmas by Jan Richardson in Circle of Grace. Perhaps it does not begin. Perhaps it has been always. Perhaps it takes a lifetime to open our eyes to learn to see what has forever shimmered in front of us. The luminous line of the map in the dark. The vigil flame in the house of the heart. The love so searing we cannot keep from singing, from crying out in testimony and praise. Perhaps this day will be the mountain over which the dawn breaks. Perhaps we will turn our face toward it, toward what has been always. Perhaps our eyes will finally open in ancient recognition, willingly dazzled, illuminated at last. Perhaps this day the light begins in us. 
for the word that was in the beginning, for the word that invites and inspires, for the word embodied in us, we give thanks. May our eyes be open to see, our ears open to hear, and our hearts open to love. The day is here, the time is now. For the majority of Australians, Christmas is a secular festival of family and feasting, relaxing and restoring, generosity and joy, to be enjoyed without requiring any particular belief. Most people are either at home or they've already traveled to join friends and family in other places to share the Christmas spirit, if not the Christmas story. After the exhausting, fear-filled, anxious COVID year that we have just lived through, this time of reconnecting and resting will be celebrated with particular poignance and meaning, and we can thoroughly affirm that. Yet here we are, gathered on Christmas morning at St. Michael's, some present in the church and others participating online. Either way, connected to this church, made sacred by the human search for meaning over 150 years. Together, we are searching for the something more of Christmas that is still found in the stories of Jesus' birth that touch our hearts and stir our imaginations. The something more that is found in the theological claim, the word of God is made flesh and dwells among us. People of faith have ways of preparing for Christmas that are less frantic than some of the patterns of our culture. In Advent's waiting and watching, in claiming stillness in the midst of chaos, journeying with Mary through the expectation of new birth, new life, and a world transformed, hearing Mary's response to the divine entering into our reality, let it be. Let this child be born, and let our world not be as it is now. Let it be different. Let there be justice and peace and a welcome for all people. The story of Jesus' birth was intended to be read as poetry, as story, metaphor. The fact that for many in the church, it has become a requirement that we literally believe unbelievable things should not distract us from the meaning at the centre of this earthly, earthy, embodied story. The story of Jesus' birth was intended to be read as poetry, as story, as metaphor. The fact that for many in the church, it has become a requirement that we literally believe unbelievable things should not distract us from the meaning at the centre of this earthy, embodied love story. The biblical stories of Jesus' birth are memorable but brief. At its heart, the story of Jesus' birth in a stable, the story of Mary and Joseph and the baby, and the odd goings-on of shepherds and angels, invites us to rediscover the sacred character of human existence. Today, we remember the Bethlehem narrative, not because of its historicity, but because of its eternal truth. Jesus was born through the labors of Mary in agony and ecstasy. He was massaged and embraced and loved into life. Mary held him to her breast and nourished him with milk that flowed from her own body. It is unsophisticated, it is undignified, the sacred among us, enfleshed, embodied, but, but according to our faith stories, this is the way things are. The story is telling us of the good of bodiliness. Christmas is a celebration and a blessing of our embodied selves and earthly existence. In celebrating the flesh that became word, we also bless our own bodies and our planet home. For through our bodies, we know and encounter the world, earth, animals, plants, people, and the sacred among us. 
It is through our bodies that we have the capacity for intimacy with one another, whether in a gentle touch, hand on hand, or in the passion of lovemaking. Our bodies meet each other, and we meet the divine, the sacred. We meet our God in our bodies. And if the sacred comes to us embodied, then surely the sacred also feels the hurts, the injuries, the disabilities, the illnesses that we experience in our bodies, including COVID-19. The sacred is present in that, in the fear and the fragility and the vulnerability of our embodied selves through this year. American theologian Nadia Boltz Weber wrote, God did not enter the world of our nostalgic silent night, snow blanketed peace on earth, suspended reality of Christmas. God slipped into the vulnerability of skin and entered our violent and disturbing world. The divine presence loves and has always loved the world. Through the process of creation, to the fulfilling of the dream for human flourishing and planetary justice. The Saviour comes not to save us from hell, but to birth us into life. The divine presence dwells in the universe we also inhabit, that we might experience the life of heaven here and now. So here we are at St Michael's, seeking the sacred in the midst of a secular holiday, seeking meaning that does not depend on literal belief or on drawing lines that divide the saved and the damned, but meaning which will shape the way that we live as people and who we are as church. I feel profoundly grateful to belong to a community where people shaped by the stories of Jesus his birth, his life, his teaching, his death, his enduring spirit, where people respond to that story, respond to the sacred's gift by seeking to love one another, to include people who have been excluded, to seek justice for the oppressed. Of course, the sacred is everywhere, but Jesus was clear about God's unique presence amongst the poor, the hungry and the thirsty, the naked and the sick, the stranger and the prisoner. In our time, the story of a vulnerable child born to migrant parents calls forth from us a response that includes advocating for Indigenous Australians to have a voice in governing their own country, release from the, for the captives from Manas, Nauru and Christmas Island, and a genuine welcome for refugee people who are here in Australia, like the poor souls who have been imprisoned in a hotel in Preston for a year and moved last week to a COVID hot hotel. Our response includes advocacy for the equal sharing of the wealth of this nation, opposition to fossil fuel mining that will damage rivers and the reef, and solidarity with the members of the LGBTIQ community subject to harm by religious practices that seek to repress or change orientation or identity. Our sacred story tells us that Jesus came into the world so that in relationship with the sacred, no one would ever be an outsider again, so that we would understand in our deepest being that we are all simply, profoundly children of God. Our countercultural choice to be together on Christmas morning points to the realization that the coming of Christ at Christmas is not just personal. It is a story that belongs to the community. It is a story that belongs to the universe, to our personal world, with all our misgivings and self-doubts to our global world, with all its conflict and injustice, to our cosmos, with all its infinite majesty. Let us give thanks 
for this world-changing here and now Christmas, for the faith that affirms that the sacred energy of life and love, God is with us. The sacred is present in the mess and the complexity of our world, calling us to collaborate in the work of redeeming and sanctifying, turning cruelty into loving kindness and the ordinary into the extraordinary. On this Christmas day in 2020, let us reclaim that story and allow the celebration of Christmas to re-energize our lives and our world. I wish you a blessed Christmas, and I also wish you courage and understanding as you make imaginative choices and take bold actions to bring about a different kind of world for everyone. For this is why we are gathered in this sacred time and space on Christmas Day. The day is here. The time is now. Amen. Let us give thanks and pray in solidarity for the needs of the world. We lift up our voices in thanksgiving on this day of all days. As each year passes, we are reminded again of the encounter of the sacred with human life in Jesus. We give thanks for the childlike delight that surrounds us and the deep wisdom of those who carry with them years of faithful commitment to the affirmations of this day. We give thanks for the moments when we hear a fragment of angel song or see a spark of starshine before us in the shadows. We lift up our voices in thanksgiving for the wonder of Christmas Day. This Christmas, as we tell the story of Jesus born in a stable, we are reminded that hope comes in unexpected ways and in unfamiliar places. We pray for the work of schools in countries where it is not safe for children to go to school, where education for girls is riskier than we could imagine. Wherever the world is in darkness, let there be light. This Christmas, as we remember the violence with which the soldiers came searching for Jesus, we are reminded that conflicts still have devastating effects on children trapped between warring sides. We pray for places where conflict is part of everyday life, and we pray in hope for peace. Wherever the world is in darkness, let there be light. This Christmas, as we remember the flight of Jesus' family to Egypt, we are reminded of the plight of people forced to flee from homes and possessions. We pray for refugees and people seeking asylum, for protection to be offered and people to be welcomed. Wherever the world is in darkness, let there be light. This Christmas, as we remember the wise ones who went to the stable, we are reminded that we need to make a journey. We pray for ourselves, for those spaces within us where love still waits to be born, for our own sharing of hope and light and love for the world. Wherever there is darkness, let there be light. And in silence, let us pray for the earth and its people, for particular places and people and situations where comfort, justice, healing, love and peace are needed.
in words spoken, in thoughts unspoken, we pray this Christmas. Amen. This Christmas morning at St Michael's Church, people will be invited to give generously to support the Act for Peace Christmas Bowl. You're not going to be able to do that this morning, but I wanted to share with you what the Christmas Bowl is about. For over 70 years, Australian churches have acted together through the Christmas Bowl to bring peace and hope to the world, giving more than $2.5 million each year for international aid and development. As people of spirit, we share this year's gifts with people who are displaced, oppressed or living in poverty, people living in places ravaged by COVID-19, and we pray for hope and healing and peace in their lives. Our gifts will make a huge difference to people in need. So acknowledging gifts shared in many ways, let us pray. We bring our gifts and we bring our lives, blessing upon blessing, that the earth and its peoples may be healed and transformed. Amen. In celebration, in joy, we sing of the promise of peace breaking into our world. Joy to the world. A blessing for the season of Christmas and the year ahead. Let us go out in celebration this Christmas day. And the blessing of the manger, God's creation all around. The blessing of the shepherds, God's people with their feet on the ground. And the blessing of the angels, good news for all and peace to the world. Be with us and with all creation this day and forevermore. Amen.